everyone, welcome to today's live episode of Beta Insider. I'm your host, Noelle. So excited to have you guys here joining us live uh, this morning. Now, my guest today um, is joining us. Uh, he's in a he's in Tel Aviv, so it is the evening time for him. I'm talking about John Samroy, who is the CEO and the inventor of MyFold. Now, this is a perfect uh, time for all of you parents or any caretakers out there who are toting young kiddos around to really uh, pay attention here because this product is something that you have never seen before. It's gonna make your life so much easier when you're transporting your kids up to soccer practice, to school, wherever you're going. Um, John, like I said, is the inventor and the CEO of MyFold, and I'm so excited to have him here to tell us more about how he founded the company um, and how he came up with these products. These are uh, the world's most compact and adjustable car booster seats. So let's bring him in now live from Tel Aviv. Hey, John, good evening to you. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> so good to have you here. Um, so excited to talk about the products and to learn more about your story, um, not only as a businessman, but also as an inventor. So let's, let's just start, let's go back to the beginning. Tell me what it was um, that initially inspired you to create the MyFold car booster seats. It's uh, an interesting story and started quite a long time ago now. I was living in uh, the US in uh, Englewood, New Jersey, just outside Manhattan. At the time, I had three little boys and they were constantly in and out of other people's cars, whether it was uh, carpooling on the way to school with the neighbors or my parents would be visiting from abroad and they had a rental car or we were in and out of taxis and it was just always a hassle to make sure that we juggled the bulky booster seats from car to car to make sure the kids were always safe. And I was looking for something that was compact and portable that the kids could keep in their school bags so they would always be safe no matter whose car they were in. And it didn't exist. And I just had an idea of maybe a better way of protecting children in cars for every journey, not just the journey in your own car where you can always leave a big bulky booster seat. Wow, okay, so tell, so when, when was that, that you kind of, you, when your kids were younger, that you were thinking about this concept? Yeah, so my eldest son is just about to have his first baby and make me a grandpa. Oh, which congratulations. Um, and he was six years old at the time, so it was 2000 um, okay. when we were living there. I, I didn't actually do anything with the idea at the time, life got busy, but about a decade later, uh, somebody reminded me, a good friend of mine reminded me of oh, this idea I'd mentioned to him because there'd been an article in the newspaper, I think it was USA Today, that mm -hmm. said half of kids in America don't use the right booster seat when they're carpooling. And the reason was exactly the same thing that I had been suffering from all those years before. And that really set me off and it started as a hobby. I mean, literally I was working full time, but uh, in my own garage, I put together the first ever prototype, which is nothing like the gorgeous products that we sell today. Uh, it was actually a black canvas mat with mountain climbing clips sewn onto it. And I mean, it looked ridiculous, but there was a concept there. And the concept was it, really quite simple. Uh, traditional booster seats. These are car seats for kids from around the age of four and above. Traditional booster seats work literally by lifting the child up. If you put a small child in the back of a car and fasten the seat belt, you have two problems. The first one is that they're too small and the seat belt is designed for an adult. So when you fasten the seat belt, what you always see is that this chest strap is rubbing on the child's face or the neck and it bothers them and they put it under their arm or behind the back, giving them no protection at all. And the other problem is the lap belt that should be across the top of the pelvis, the top of the thighs against the pelvis is up on the stomach. A traditional booster seat lifts the child up. It puts them into the position of the adult. The idea that I had had was to do the opposite. Instead of lifting the child up to fit the seat belt, I wondered if you could hold the seat belt down to fit the child. And this black folding floppy canvas mat was my way of testing it. And uh, that's, that's exactly what I did. Uh, I, I, I flew uh, to the UK where there was a crash test center called the Transport Research Laboratory. 
And I asked them to see if this would protect a child in the same way that a traditional booster seat would. And I think between you and me, that they were laughing at me. You know, who's this idiot with a folding <laughs> floppy thing? But I had paid my money, so they ran the test. And to everybody's surprise, mine and the technicians that were running the facility, uh, it worked in exactly the same way as a traditional booster seat. In fact, I remember the technician called all his colleagues in to watch the slow motion video because they couldn't believe it. But that's really what kicked off, uh, kicked off the business. And now, John, do you have a background as a product designer? No. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, wow. a, I'm a traditional consumer marketeer, consumer packaged goods. I spent most of my career in marketing and senior management roles in big international companies like Unilever and Johnson & Johnson. Mm. But uh, I, I, I had an idea and really just by asking people advice and building a network and making connections, uh, I, I pushed this forward. I, I not only didn't have experience in product design, I, I knew nothing about child passenger safety and car seats other than using them with my own kids. Uh, I didn't know anything about registering patents, which is something we did very early on and has been truly valuable for the business now, and industrial engineering uh, and design and mechanical engineering and material science. All of these things I've learned on the, on the journey. Wow. What a remarkable story. It's so funny when you talk about kind of, um, you know, the, the traditional car seat and how the child sort of fits into that and sits higher up and the, and the, the you know, a seat belt rubbing on their face or their chest. I, I mean, it's been years, right, since I've been in a car seat, but I have vivid memories of being so uncomfortable in, you know, in the back seat of my dad's Chevrolet Suburban um, and just... I mean, it, so it's it's funny to me how I don't think that those, you know, memory not only parents approve of, but also that is, is wonderful for children as well and that they approve of. Uh, tell me how much or maybe how little innovation the car seat has seen since it was invented, I think, in the early 60s. The first patent that was ever registered for what we now call car seats, child car seats, was in the early 60s. And it was literally a box that lifted the child up so that a lap belt would hold them in place. And I have, one moment, uh, th this, this is something that you, you, you can buy now. And what's this, uh, 60 years later, more than half a century, it's exactly the same. It's literally a box that lifts a child up. So although yeah. there are incredible uh, different variety of products on the market and they look different in terms of design and fabric and color they essentially all work in the same way until we brought out this and so when you compare that to that right. it's it you can see the potential for protecting children on every journey because the reason we didn't always protect our kids unfortunately uh, I mean, we were lucky because we never got in a collision, but it's because you can't carry one of these around. And if you're going to soccer practice and you need to take it with you, where do you put it if you're going to the cinema or if you're going to school or at a friend's house? But with something as small as the MyFold Grab and Go Booster Seat, you can literally uh, keep it in a school bag. And if you get in a car and there isn't a car seat, you can just pull this out and open it up and use it. And what it does is, it adjusts the adult seatbelt to fit the child perfectly. And that's actually the pattern that we have. So although it's a relatively simple idea, it's a flat seat. You have three belt guides, two at the sides that pull out. Those are the red arms. And then a third belt guide here, here on the end of the strap that goes behind the child's shoulder. Those three belt guides position the adult seatbelt correctly on the child. But because we have very effective patterns protecting both the concept and the designs, we're still the only people coming up to six years later who have ever been able to launch a product that's so compact and portable that it is uh, 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 ultra compact. We created the ultra compact car seat category. 
Right, ultra compact. And really, I mean, um, on your website, on myfold.com, there are lots of images and media that people can check out where you see um, three children sitting side by side um, using the MyFold and they all, you know, there, there's room between them, um, you know, because they're not in some sort of bulky booster seat where you can only fit, you know, maybe two at a time. They all fit in the back seat very comfortably. <laughs> which is amazing, uh, amazing to see. Now, we also have the, uh, the high fold, high back car booster seat, John, which I would love yeah. for you to kind of demonstrate how that, how that works. Yes, so uh, my fold is a backless booster seat and it's really for children from the age of four and above and those that can sit properly for an entire journey. And so the child has to be mature enough to sit properly in one of these. There are a lot of parents and caregivers that are looking for something that looks more like a traditional car seat with a backrest and a headrest because it provides more comfort and makes sure, again, that the seat belt is optimally positioned for the child. And the challenge we had when we had first we first launched MyFold, the challenge we had was how could we do a high back car seat like that, mm -hmm. but also ultra compact? And you can see the picture behind us, which is the high fold seat. But I have one here that I'm going to demonstrate. I think I have to Excellent. zoom out a bit here. <laughs> so this, um, slightly bigger than my fold, but you can see an incredibly uh, compact and portable product when you compare it to one of these, which is a traditional high back booster. So right. you don't see anybody walking around the streets carrying one of these when they're getting into their Uber or they're renting their car from Toro or something like that. But more and more, you're seeing people doing this, which is carrying a nice high fold product like that, easily wow. carrying it on the shoulder. And the way that the high fold works is, is, well, it's great fun. So don't blink, but in two seconds, it goes from compact to set up. And so that is uh, a high back booster seat that uh, is an incredible feat of engineering. In that big seat that I showed you a moment ago, there's probably something like 20 or 30 components because it's a rigid shell covered in fabric. But to make high fold where every single element of this seat folds and adjusts, um, it's got something like 500 components in it and yet it still is rigid and sturdy enough to protect a child in a collision. Wow. And here, here you're seeing it on the smallest setting, but actually this has got nine different height settings. As you can see, it goes all the way up to there. So this will protect you know, a small 12 year old who still may not be large enough to be protected by an adult seatbelt. And in addition to adjusting the height, you can adjust the width here with three different settings, both on the shoulder rests and the headrest you can see there, and also these side rests. And that gives you an amazing 243 different configurations for this seat. So it, it's not a gimmick. It literally means that you can adjust this to be the perfect size, whatever the size, shape, or weight of the child. And uh, when you're ready, and uh, you want to carry this around or store it if you're going to put it in the trunk of the car. It's very simple in four easy steps. One, you fold in the sides. Two, you fold down the back. Three, you fold back the headrest. And then four, you fold down the sides and you're back to that beautiful, compact and portable design that you can carry around easily or store. Amazing. John, I'm just, so fascinated by the design. Um, have you clocked how, how long it takes from, you know, uh, kind of assembling it, right? Popping out all of those different components, putting it in the car, putting the child in the car, and then getting in the front seat. I can't imagine it takes longer than what? A couple minutes well, of that? Well, oh, much, much less. One, one of the main lines on our design brief with all of our products is less than 30 seconds from curbside to driving off. So if you're picking up a child from school and you in that line and all the parents are getting frustrated, you don't want to be holding people up while you're setting up you know, a complicated product. 
Um, we, we've, you, children as young as four and five can put themselves into a MyFold in less than 30 seconds. And as you saw with HiFold, um, you, if you blink, you miss it. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and kind of speaking of frustration, I have, you know, I'm sure my parents, you know, a couple of times not to, you know, call them out. But when parents get frustrated or even babysitters, caretakers, you know, and you can't get it exactly right, I think a lot of people tend to cheat and not set it, uh, set it up correctly, set up traditional car seats correctly. And that, I, I imagine, is obviously a huge a safety issue. So yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest problems in child passenger safety today is people invest money in beautifully designed products. But if they aren't used correctly, they aren't going to work to protect the child. In fact, they can even be worse than that because a seat that's not installed or used correctly can actually injure a child if there was a collision. Right. And speaking of safety, um, I'm so curious uh, to know sort of how you managed to develop this product and to meet a variety of global safety standards. It was one of those uh, early on in the process, one of those uh, programs that was a learning curve for me. But mm -hmm. we work with, I would say, the best child passenger safety uh, advocates in the world that advise our company on an ongoing basis to make sure that all of our products comply with the standards. What we're very proud of, and I think we're the only uh, company in the world producing car seats like this, is that all of the seats we now manufacture are globally regulated. So people will be familiar with buying a car seat in the US and it not being regulated for use in Europe or in Asia and the other way around. But because our products are so small and compact and portable, one of the main reasons people buy them initially is because they're traveling and they're going on vacation and they want to be able to take it with them. So all of our products are, are regulated not only with the UN international standard that covers most countries in the world, but specifically we have to do separate regulations for the USA, for Canada, for China, and for... Um, yeah. I think it's South Korea, but uh, but all of our products comply uh, with all of those standards, except for Australia. Australia has a unique standard. Okay, okay, but hey, that's okay. Even without Australia, that is pretty good. Um, now, I'm I'm not a parent, um, so I've never had to, you know, I've never experienced traveling with a child. But typically, you would rent, you would get to your destination, and then you would rent a car seat. Is that correct? For like a rental car, right? You would rent a, a car seat to go along with the car. That's right. The, okay. uh, the the majority the majority of people don't take car seats with them because you've seen with the other examples I've shown you they're just right. too big and bulky. Although uh, one of my hobbies in the good old pre-corona days when I used to travel a lot was taking photographs of families walking through airports burdened down with all of these big bulky car seats and I would give them one of my business cards which obviously has pictures of, uh, of, of our products on them. Uh, but people who don't take them with them, uh, they have three challenges. One is that they have to turn up at the rental car station and hope that there is the right kind of car seat available for them. It's not always guaranteed, even if you book them. But the second challenge is mm. often, unfortunately, these products aren't particularly well looked after. Uh, they can be dirty. You can't be sure whether all of the components that are supposed to be there are there. And the third problem, and I think one of the biggest ones, is that's only part of the vacation journey. You have to get from home to the airport. You have to get from the airport to the car rental station. And that's right. where parents cut corners. Uh, they take the risk. And what we set out to do was to make sure that no parent ever had to cut corners because car seats are too big and bulky to have with all the time. Right. Yeah. Well, you talked a little bit about Uber and Turo. Um, you know, increasingly, I think we're uh, relying on these, um, you know, car sharing services, right, where we're, um, you know, we, we need products like this that are that are portable. It's not just important anymore. It's really becoming more of a necessity. So as I told you earlier on, I came up with this concept, invented this range of products for the old world, for the problems I mm -hmm. faced with my children when they were little. But in the last few years, as you say, we are going through a personal transportation revolution. 
um, car ownership in the US for the last four years has decreased because people are choosing, especially millennials, and especially millennials are, are now the parents that are having the children that are four, five, six years old, um, they're choosing all of these alternatives, whether it's Zipcar, Lyft, Uber, uh, Toro, as you're saying. And if you don't own a car, where do you leave your car seat? You can't leave your car seat in the car. So you have to carry it with you all the time. And we've done quite significant research. And actually, a lot of people that have adopted these alternative transportation, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, alternative forms of transportation, when they have their children, they have to stop and go back to car ownership. But now we believe that we're uh, solving that problem so that they can continue to use the apps and the car that they want for the journey that they're taking without that ridiculously huge investment necessary to own a car and still to keep their children safe all the time. Right. Yeah, I love that you've really developed these products, like I mentioned earlier, not only with you know kids in mind, but with, with parents in mind as well. So it really is a product that both parties will love. Tell me, as a parent and also as a soon-to-be grandparent, which congratulations again, uh, what does it mean to you to be able to bring this product uh, to market for parents, soon-to-be soon to be grandparents like yourself, um, and again, you know, caretakers or anyone that's toting around a kiddo? Yeah. yeah uh, one of the most wonderful things of this job and this company, and and I get to do these great things by, you know, being interviewed by people like you and and I get all the publicity, but there is a team of people behind me who are truly dedicated and actually do all the hard work. And all of us come to work every day because we are passionate about child passenger safety. And occasionally we hear stories from parents who have bought our products and they tell us that they've you know, unfortunately been in a collision, but their child was using a MyFold or a HiFold seat and they write right. to thank them. In fact, we share all of these stories. You can go to a section of our website. We call it our Hall of Fame. It's myfold.com slash fame. And you can actually read the stories and see photos of the, both uh, the parents, the caregivers, the children, and often the vehicles. Um, you know, you can see the kind of damage that the vehicles have sustained. And this makes me personally and the whole team really proud. Um, you know, we obviously work because we feed ourselves from the work that we do, but there's another level to it, which is that we're actually proud that we are truly saving lives and we are doing it worldwide. So although you and I have really been talking from a very US perspective, we have sold well over a million of our MyFold and HiFold seats in more than 150 countries around the world. And, uh, you know, there is nothing more satisfying to me than just seeing on social media pictures from people all over the world with uh, children using our products. It's, uh, it's a great thing to wake up every morning for. Absolutely. And I also want to just let everybody know to speak a little bit to the accessibility and the affordability piece. So we have on, on beta.com, we have the Comfort Car Booster Seat available for $34.99 and the High Fold High Back Car Booster Seat for $129. 99. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but the, that's a per, those are pretty good price tags in comparison to what else is out there on the market. So uh, we are slightly premium to the average on the market. You know, you can go to some, you know, club stores in the US when they're stacking booster seats high and we know you can get them cheaper. But what we're truly offering uh, at those prices is things that differentiate on functionality. So mm -hmm. you, you really are looking for something that's comfortable for every day and safe for every day, but also compact enough for every adventure. Whatever you're doing with, with a child, wherever you're going, you know that once you've made that purchase, uh, you're going to be able to use that to protect the child on every journey. And in fact, there's, there's, there's a couple of things that we didn't expect when we first started selling. And that is people, as I say, normally buy initially because they're thinking oh, they're going on a vacation. But people tend to buy three or four of these and it's wonderful to see. They buy one to go in their kid's school bag. They put one in the glove box of the car. So when their child comes you know, home from soccer practice and they've got a friend with them that they weren't expecting, there's always a spare one available. Grandparents love MyFold and HiFold because they often only see the grandkids 
at the weekend and they don't want the back seat of the car cluttered up <laughs> all of the time. So they can right. so simply take a my fold and put it in the glove box or a high fold in the trunk and uh, they, they, they aren't going to you know be losing that cabin space or passenger space. Absolutely. Yeah. None of that kind of taking the car seat from, you know, the, the back seat to the garage and then back again or wherever it is that you can fit it in the trunk, wherever it is. Um, now, in closing, John, I would love to just ask you kind of what we can expect to see from MyFold in the future. We are always working on uh, new projects. There are now four different versions of MyFold uh, and we have the high fold seat as well. But everything I've talked about are for older children. Uh, all children need to be protected in cars from the day they're born all the way up to the age when, or the size when an adult seatbelt fits. We currently do the second part, but people shouldn't be too surprised if one day we come out with an ultra compact take on a baby or an infant seat. So keep your eyes open for something along those lines. But also we're doing some really exciting things that I can only give you a little uh, teaser about. Uh, in terms of electronics and ways of working with fleets to make it practical to have uh, child restraint systems for cars in fleets. So um, we've already started in, uh, actually in Singapore, there is a company called Grab, which is Uber's biggest competitor in the world today. And they've already bought tens of thousands of our seats to make sure that every one of their cars has got a MyFold seat in there. And we're coming up with electronic systems that are going to make it much more relevant for fleets to put child to car seats in. And I think the next stage is we are on the verge of seeing autonomous vehicles everywhere. Yeah, I know uh, that where you guys are, you, all, you see them driving around the streets all the time <laughs> as everybody's testing them. But there are so many questions about what do you do for child passenger safety in autonomous vehicles. And as a company, we're at the forefront of the thinking of how that's going to work as well. Wow, yeah, that uh, I think is just around the corner for all of us. Um, so really cool that you guys are on the cutting edge as well um, with child safety and car boost receipts. John, thank you so much for joining me this morning on Beta Insider. Thank you so much for having me. It's been, it's been great fun. Yes, definitely. And I want to let everybody know that's watching that you can head on over to beta.com to check out the MyFold products. Also, head over to MyFold.com to learn more about the safety features and also the story behind MyFold. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, we'll see you back here in the Beta TV studio again very soon for more live episodes of Beta Insider.